there. This is the Public Art Advisory Committee, Monday, January 23rd at 4.30 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting. Um, this meeting is compliant with the Ralph M. Brown Act as amended by California Assembly Bill Number 361, effective September 16th, 2021, providing for a public health emergency exception to the standard teleconference rules required by the Brown Act. The purpose of this is to provide a safe environment for the public, staff, and committee members while allowing for public participation. Accordingly, the public may observe the committee and or address the committee using remote public comment options or have the option to attend the committee in person. Please be advised that committee members may continue to participate in the meeting remotely. The committee may take action on, on any item listed in the agenda. If you join in person, you may come to Brisbane City Hall, 50 Park Place, Brisbane, in the large conference room. Masks are no longer required, but are highly recommended in accordance with California Department of Health guidelines to maintain public health and safety. Please do not attend in person if you're experiencing symptoms associated with COVID-19 or respiratory illness. To join virtually, you'll join this Zoom webinar, webinar ID 865-6065-0564 to address the committee in-person participation to address the committee on any item on or not on the posted agenda. Please wait until public comments are being accepted. Remote participation. Members of the public may observe participate in the committee meeting by logging into the Zoom webinar. The agenda materials may be viewed online at www.brisbaneca.org at least 72 hours prior to a meeting. Remote public comments. Meeting participants are encouraged to submit public comments in writing in advance of the meeting. Aside from commenting while in the Zoom meeting, the following email line will be monitored during the meeting and public comment received will be noted for the record during public comment or during an item. A. Ibera at brisbaneca.org. All right, at this time we'll do roll call. Mayor Davis. Here. Councilmember Cunningham. Here. Chair Davis. Here. Vice Chair Oliveira Salmon. Here. Park and Recreation Commissioner Greenlee. Here. Park and Recreation Commissioner Sewell. Here. Committee Member Grossman. You're muted. Here. Oh, here. Great. All right. We'll move on to approval of the agenda. I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Okay. Roll call. Mayor Davis. Aye. Council Mayor Cunningham. Aye. Chair Davis. Aye. Vice Chair Salmon. Aye. Park and Recreation Commissioner Greenlee. Aye. Park and Recreation Commissioner Sewell. Aye. Committee Member Grossman. Aye. All right, up this time we'll go to approval of the minutes of September 26, 2022. So, um, so moved. And we have a second on that. Second. Second. Wait, 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 wait. So um, those who need to abstain because they were not at the meeting is um, Mayor Davis, oh, okay. uh, Greenlee, and Grossman. Oh, okay. So <laughs> if you were at the meeting, I'll take a first. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Right. That was a nice one. Okay. There you go. <laughs> and roll call for that is Councilmember Cunningham. Aye. Chair Davis. Abstain. Oh, Chair Davis. Aye. Oh, Chair Davis, sorry. Vice Chair Salmon. Chair Davis is Aye. in the same room. Park and, oh, uh, abstain, Park, and Park and Recreation Commissioner Sewell. Aye. And uh, Committee Member Grossman will abstain. Okay. And at this time, we'll move on to item B, approval of the minutes of the 27th. Are there any uh, uh, committee members not in attendance on that one? Oh, Angel? Greenlee, Grossman, and Sewell. On uh, the 27th? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh. And any other members uh, make a motion and a second on that? I move that we accept the minutes. Second. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mayor Davis. Aye. Council Member Cunningham. Aye. Chair Davis. Aye. Vice Chair Salmon. Aye. And the remainder will abstain. Great. Thank you. All right, thank you. We'll move on to presentation and discussion item C, receive presentation from South San Francisco Cultural Arts Commission representative regarding their public art master plan process. And at this time, I'd like to invite um, 
Ursi Santos from the Cultural Arts Specialist and Erin O'Brien of South San Francisco. Welcome and thank you so much for coming to our meeting and um, taking time out of your busy schedule. We really appreciate that. And um, how much time do we have? Or uh, just so we can, um, or what, when are you, I'm just trying to gauge our meeting. Erin noted that they didn't have a hard stop this evening. They have prepared a presentation with some slides that they will um, transition through, and then they're happy to field additional questions from the committee following that. Okay, thank you so much. You can have the floor. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for having us. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. And as I do so, I'm, I just would like to again, thank you for having us and um, introduce who I have. It's myself, Erin O'Brien. I'm the business manager at the Parks and Recreation Department in South San Francisco. And joining me today is Ursi Santos, the cultural arts specialist for South San Francisco, who really is our main um, liaison with our cultural arts commission and really the backbone of the cultural arts um, here in South San Francisco. So we're gonna kind of tag team this um, little slide presentation. You can all see my screen, is that correct? Yes, great. All right, so we'll go ahead and move forward here. Um, so our overview just of what we're discussing today, we are going to go over the background of our public art master plan. And just so you all are aware, um, our public art master plan is still in progress. So we'll take you through the steps and where we are today. Um, so we'll do that in the timeline portion, and then we'll review the budget that we have for it um, briefly, as well as the current status and what that entails. Um, so at this time, we go ahead and pass it over to Ursi. Hello, thank you all. Um, so I, I will speak a little bit uh, uh, to the uh, process that we uh, involved actually coming up with uh, with our uh, consultants uh, and the initial stages of the uh, public art master plan or uh, achieving one. First of all, uh, the public art master plan, as this slide indicates, uh, is uh, uh, intended to be a comprehensive plan to be aligned uh, with the city's general plan update. Uh, the We have never had a public art master plan. The city has never had a public art master plan, but um, it became, it has become over the years very clear that uh, to have a tool and a guidance uh, policies this is something that the, as the city grew uh, was really necessary, something really needed. Um, so, uh, and I, I ironically or ideally, uh, this kind of all began in the middle of COVID. Uh, and during that time, we also uh, had some new members to our Cultural Arts Commission who uh, saw the need to identify um, elements uh, of the arts program in the city, uh, where it stood, uh, it, artist participation, artist needs, and uh, they uh, created a future public art plan subcommittee, and part of that included conducting a survey of residents uh, as to the arts, uh, and that included initial research into de devising uh, a public art master plan. So it all, everything kind of landed in at the same time uh, in, um, it, uh, in the middle of COVID. Um, the document is intended to be a tool to guide the city of South San Francisco in arts planning on a long-term basis. Uh, we were looking for a uh, inventory of our art and art programs. Uh, an analysis of current and forecasted needs and the strategies that we needed to implement these, um, these uh, re recommendations. Uh, we were looking for a, uh, a plan that uh, identified the, the city, uh, city's identity, and that would be uh, give us planning uh, goals for five to 10 to 20 years into the future. Um, and I guess we could go to the next slide. So this is, uh, we initiated a, a request for proposal. Uh, this is the rough timeline that uh, that that was took to develop this. Um, 
we started in 2021 with some initial research. Actually, as I said, our, our new members, uh, uh, looking back at some history, uh, uh, conducted their surveys in, in, in January of 2021. So I would say uh, research even started a little bit before. It just we didn't realize that this was coming down the road. Um, so we started in March uh, 2021. Uh, uh, after that uh, research into seeing what other cities did, what other community did, and uh, what we uh, for other projects have done here in the city, uh, then uh, started in creating drafts of our RFPs. Uh, it went back and forth amongst uh, our legal team, uh, staff members, uh, our commission, who uh, had a their a smaller subcommittee of uh, future public art planning uh, went through it as well. So it went back and forth all those months for corrections, updates, and whatnot. Um, on September 27th, we actually opened a call for entries. Uh, within that call for entries, uh, we had a question deadline for questions of October 25th. Um, and the uh, proposal submission deadline, which was uh, which was uh, on through online submission, but we also required hard copies. Uh, that deadline was November eighth. Um, review of the applications was conducted uh, in November and December. Uh, it, we had three submissions uh, and. Uh, interviewed the top two applicants. We went through two phases of evaluation and uh, uh, called down to two applicants and those two were actually interviewed. Uh, January, we conducted reference checks. The uh, contract was awarded in February and uh, the kickoff was in May. Uh, and actually initial discussion began with me at the end of uh, April <laughs> with, our, uh, with our consultant. A um, couple of the other points here. Our selection committee uh, that reviewed the proposals were uh, a team of five people that included two uh, cultural art commissioners, uh, our city planner, uh, myself uh, as cultural art specialist, and the Park and Recreation Department deputy, deputy director. Um, uh, we yeah. ha sent promotion out through the NorCal PAN group. Uh, we had local press involved. Uh, uh, call went out to California Arts Council. Uh, our call was done through the Procure Now uh, platform. Uh, and then we had notices placed in our city newsletter as well. Uh, we had referrals that came to us from the staff, uh, directors, uh, NorCal, uh, NorCal Penn. Public Art Administrators Group sent us some referrals as well, so we sent uh, invitations and notices to all those part, all those people and organizations. So, um, yeah, I'll give it back to to Erin at this point to see what happened after the that consultant was selected. Thanks, Cersei. Um, so our budget we had outlined, we show here the eighty thousand. That really is just for the consulting services. We had um, earmarked a hundred thousand. And that actually happened. It was uh, came from our general plan um, efforts that were underway about the same time that we were kicking this off. So we had um, about twenty thousand that was for um, contingency or extra staff costs that ended. We ended up needing um, to help support um, this effort. And then, um, as far as our consultant plan timeline, so we were we did um, go with Art Builds Community. Um, and so they kind of built out the phases of the next stages, which you can see here, we have phase one, which is our research, phase two, our community engagement, phase three, which we are currently at, which is our um, synthesis and plan outline. And then phase four is the write and refine plan. And if all goes accordingly, we are expected to go um, to our council in May um, to present our um, final public art master plan. But in between there, there's a few steps. Um, one being very heavily on our community outreach and community engagement. Um, so I kind of will take you through that a little bit here. Um, we had, um, we 
conducted a bunch of surveys. So we had those both electronically, digitally, as well as some hard copies at various satellite sites or events that we held. Um, and we got um, just, I think, believe just under 200 responses. We had the surveys in both English and Spanish. And um, that through that period, our um, consultants were able to get gather a bunch of emerging themes that that were kept coming to the top through their, all the results that they did. Um, and so I think there is just about 20 themes that will help in their next step now as they're writing um, kind of form um, just the, the general recommendations that will be included in our public art master plan. Um, and so then kind of to help get the word out with our surveys and just everything we're doing, we did a general webinar that, that anyone could have access to um, on our web pages and sent out through eblast and on our social media pages. That's kind of how we did it with all anything we had, whether it was a surveys, whether it was um, announcing an upcoming event that we were going to be held at or focus groups. So we kind of made sure that all the information was going out in various forms. Um, and I think we even did written um, post. We had postcards that were including um, information for our um, engagement um, pieces that were coincided with um, art um, gallery showings that we were having. So we kind of had included that on our um, outreach efforts on there just so people could have a written copy. We also included in our activity guides that went out to all residents as well. And um, so just kind of making sure we were getting all outlets to, so community knew what was happening. Um, and then at our pop-up events, um, our consultants from Art Builds community were able to attend four different pop-up pop events. So we had two art shows that were happening that they tabled and had interactive um, components to where they really, you know, got the com community to give their feedback, maybe in ways that the community didn't even realize they were doing the feedback. I think you can see here, um, this was actually at our concert in the park, which is our, our largest event we do here in South City. Um, and they were able to do an interactive art project with the consultants, um, choosing the color yarn that you'll, or uh, yarn that you'll see there um, kind of indicated what what they wanted to see. So they found really creative ways. We also um, had a movie in the park in Kanto. Um, so they were able to do um, a themed project to go with the Encanto movie um, that kids and adults were um, very interested in. And they had um, that was in our old town neighborhood and they were able to have um, Spanish translators on hand as needed to, which we found to be really helpful as well. Um, and then we did a bunch of focus groups throughout. Um, so different different focus groups, various meetings, meeting with city staff from different departments, um, as well as meeting with um, local um, or not local, but um, contractors and developers within the city. And that's been helpful. Um, part, part of this is the city in 2020, um, we did a public art requirement um, for non-residential and development projects, um, which required 1% uh, of the construction cost or a in lieu fee of half a percent for of construction costs that would go to the city. So um, part of the plan is also that we're having um, Art Builds community really kind of help us refine maybe some of the language that was used in there and the, and the guidelines for that. So it's been helpful to also have them be able to meet with developers and kind of um, hear what they have to say as well. So um, lots of meetings like that. We also did um, like uh, artists, so very artist focused meetings. And um, we've done, we did one in person and we did one virtual of those, um, just kind of hit different days, different times. And maybe people, the in-person was, uh, you know, maybe smaller focus and the virtual was able to be open to anyone. Um, and throughout the whole process, you know, we kind of kept the theme of if you live, work, play, um, or visit South San Francisco, we want to hear from you. And so we, we felt that was really important throughout. Um, and, and we really felt, you know, we got a, a good amount of feedback. We did focus groups with the school district. And so just different focus groups have really helped have those one-on-one -on -one meetings in person and for some virtual to kind of really help develop um, our plan and where we stand with it now. Um, so that kind of ends our presentation, but we definitely are open to questions and happy um, to answer any that you guys might have for us. Awesome. Thank you, Erin and Ursi. 
Oh, go ahead. Okay, thank you both for coming. We appreciate your time. I'm gonna go ahead if, if, um, if it's okay with the committee members, we have questions that we've already um, looked at prior to other meeting with other cities. So I'm just gonna try to go through some, um, most of them you've answered, but I'm just gonna uh, maybe ask some other information. Um, so far, I guess would you, one of the questions is, did you feel that this budget was accurate? So you had 100,000 and 80,000 was for this project and you had like 20 in case you needed it, sounds like. Do you think so far that's been accurate for this project? Yes, definitely. I, I think um, most, most we were able to get what we have so far from our um, consultants at Artbuilds community. That's been really helpful um, with that 80,000. And um, we've seen increase in staff time that we've been able to use as needed to. Um, so, so yes, our 100,000 was, was spot on for that, for sure. Okay. And then were the, have there been any issues or snags either in the contract that you wish you'd known beforehand or just any issues that you've come up uh, come across so far? No issues from our contracts, no. Okay. Uh, so I, I guess along with that, was there anything that you would add or delete from the initial contract to make a better product that you could think of? Well, maybe when we get our final product, I can come back and better answer okay, that. Okay. Now right. we seem to be pretty good with it. So. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Uh, you've answered some of these already. Um, some of these are reflections. So uh, you're in the middle of this. Um, is there any advice you'd give us so far based on your experience? I know you're in the middle of that. Any advice? I'll let Ursi, if she has anything, chime in. Um, I think, you know, just we've really just been the communication, you know, just between the consultants, between the community members, um, just really invaluable. So you just can't stress it enough. Um, but yeah, so far, it, it seems to be going all right so far. So. Okay. And then um, the other one I would like to ask is, would you hire that same consultant uh, so far, I mean, you're working with them so far. Would you hire? Yeah, them I, I think again? it will really all depend on our final product and what okay. we get. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, some of these have to do with uh, how long it took and all that, and you've kind of given us a timeline. So we may just have to come back and visit you again. Um, okay. You know, and so at this point, I would like to open it up to committee members and who has their hand. Okay. Karen, go ahead. Thank you, and thanks for the, the presentation. It was great. It's uh, helping us learn. So you, I've got two questions. So you said um, you received 200 responses, and the population of South City is about 65,000. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Right. So how did you reach out to people to get those responses? What, what was your outreach methods, I guess, is the question. Yeah, so we, um, thanks for that question. We did, uh, like I mentioned, various pop-ups. We would distribute information with, we had QR codes, we had hard copied um, surveys if needed as, as opposed to just doing it on your phone. Um, I would say we hit our social media, which was our Facebook, our Instagram. We did our, our monthly newsletters as well as um, art focused. And when I say newsletters, I'm sorry, that's an e-blast, an email newsletter. Mm -hmm. And then as well as art focused um, e-blasts, we would send out um, we did um, reached out to, uh, Ursi mentioned earlier, some of our local uh, media sources. So like for us, a big one is everything South San Francisco. So we'd reach out to them to help circulate the word. Um, the consultants would be able to post to their um, community, their their outreach that they have, their connections as well, and their um, share on their social media. Um, I believe, Ursi, we circulate to the, the PAN group as well. Um, yeah. Yes, we did. And we also, I think Aaron said earlier, with our upcoming art show, we uh, also did a hard copy mailer. Uh, mm -hmm. We had flyers all in every building here, every recreation building uh, that uh, we um, that we have. So uh, pretty much it, it word got out there. Um, yeah, very pretty much widely. And and I will also add, we did um, meet with a few different commissions within the city too. Um, early on, we were finding we were having a hard time reaching some of the youth. 
So we met with the youth commission and encouraged them um, to pass the word along. We reached out to the high school um, art instructors that we knew to help try to pass the word along to the youth as well. Um, and I would say generally we saw most responses um, pretty evenly between 18 and 65. Uh, and that was kind of where we were getting most of our responses from. Um, so we still were missing a little bit of the youth and a little bit um, of, of the um, active aging older population. Thanks. That's going to help us figure out how to do that too. Um, the, the other question is, okay, you still don't have a, a master plan in place, but you have a lot of different artwork already throughout South San Francisco. So what was your process of getting things done without having a master plan in place? Well, I'm going to pass that to Ursi because Ursi is really the reason why we have everything we have here in South San Francisco. So Ursi, you want to take that one? Thank yeah, you. yeah. Well, yeah. So I've been with the city in this capacity for a little over 20 years. And um, it's been um, the the commission was founded in 96 and that kind of kicked off a concerted effort. I wasn't here around in 96, <laughs> but at least not as cultural art specialist. But um, but it, it's been a, a little piecemeal. You know, it, uh, the commission that we had came up with a couple of directives. Regular art gallery shows was one of them. So uh, the city's, uh, the park and recreation directors at the time supported very much the, the guidance of the commission. Uh, so four art gallery shows in a year were instituted. Um, uh, a youth art scholarship was instituted over time. Um, and with regards to big public uh, uh, installations. Uh, they came about various ways. Some were done via call for entries. Some were done a commissioner. If the commissioner saw something, they um, uh, art piece that they really wanted to um, include in the city. It was brought to the full commission, vetted by staff, and um, we accepted it. Um, uh, there was a sculpture garden, part of our Orange Memorial Park, uh, a, a sculpture garden area was developed uh, through through the part of the work of the commission. So there were there was a, in the earlier years, uh, there was a sculpture loan program that was incorporated. So um, over time, without the guidance of a tool, things, you know, we learned from other cities when a need arise, for example, a utility box project, we went, we researched what other cities had done, and then we, we did it. Um, so, uh, but uh, again, it, the, it, it became, it has become clear that we needed to uh, guidance for, for things like deaccession of, of art and donations of art. You know, what are the policies? What are the best practices? It's something that we never really had an understanding for or a, a document that would give us that guidance. And so that that was part of the reason, a very important part of the reason for have, uh, you know, pursuing this. Um, and then to um, the there is a lot of growth in the city with regards to development and such. Um, the hope is that many more dollars uh, through that ordinance will come into the city's bucket for art. And we needed a, we need we see that we need a tool for how are those proceeds going to be used. Um, so it, it's just kind of uh, learning uh, in the university of the street, so to speak. And and here we are. <laughs> So, so would you recommend us doing absolutely nothing until we have a master plan in place, perfect and all of that? Or would you feel comfortable if you were in our shoes of moving forward with a few smaller projects while we're putting this together? Well, I would say that that would be up to your, your community, but, but you know, to have uh, uh, some guidance. Uh, I, I wouldn't say do not start with projects. I'd say, no, you've got, you want to, you want to start baby steps at, at least to get, get uh, some, the art out there into the world and let your community know about art and whatever, in whatever pursuit you want, but to, with the ultimate goal of coming up with a guideline, you know, as, as hopefully your community will grow to incorporate more art 
and even if you didn't, when these problems that do come your way uh, of what happens with a piece of art is damaged and what, you know, to know what those guidelines are on in the national um, world, it, 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 whether or not you decide to pursue the policy, it would be good to, to have that knowledge available you. to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's been very helpful. Thanks. Uh, before we move on, I have a question uh, regarding a comment that was made to Karen for Aaron on the outreach. Um, could you suggest what was your most successful form of outreach out of the 200? You, you, you um, gave us a really, a really great list of so many different ways you went about outreaches or one way or two um, that were really got, got the most responses that you could recommend. So I don't have that in those numbers. Um, they kind of went through our consultants, but I can say that most of them were um, responses were all um, digital or virtual responses, um, very minimum on the actual hard copy. Um, mm -hmm. So I would I would imagine that I don't know which exactly which ones if it was our newsletters or social media, um, but I can I can inquire and get back to you guys with some of that information. I don't have it readily available for you. Okay, great. And then my second question on that is, um, uh, Ursi, one of them I'm talking about working right now, do you have in, uh, you're working with your consultant, do you have um, detailed plans on, for instance, who owns the art, who, um, who maintains it? Um, these are things that came up in our previous um, interviews, transfer of title, all that kind of kind of thing. Is that something you're currently working on with your consultant in that document? Can they hear me? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, um, yes. Um, well, you know, we did ask them for in uh, to give us guidelines with regards to uh, items such as um, um, maintenance and deaccession, removing art, donations of art and whatnot. So, you know, we'll see when the final product comes, but it, certainly uh, some of those items that you mentioned is are some of the requirements that we ask for to be included in the document. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, were you next, Madison? Yeah, okay. Um, can you, Erin, can you explain how many responses to the RFP you got? Yeah, we got three, okay. got three completed. I think we had some inquiries um, that did not end up um, putting an application forward, but we had three completed applications that we And then in. did you interview all three? We interviewed oh. the top two. Okay. I don't know. I guess did, I did they know what the budget it. was. Hi, this is Tom. And thank you for, um, for being here. This is great. And Liz Larson, Told, told me about you guys. So uh, I don't know if you know her, but I wanted to give a thumbs up to Liz for connecting the dots. Um, uh, yeah. Well, did they know the budget? Did you know the budget? Did they know the budget? Did you know, did the consultant or the RFPs know what the budget was before they submitted? Yeah, I believe we did include that in, um, in the actual <laughs> application so they, they're aware. And then um, I think because we've been like, Maybe when we we've had RFP for art itself, we get so many responses. And then when we've had more on in this avenue, we've got so much less. And so um, I think it's like just a good good for us to kind of adjust what our expectations are. That the response responses are going to be different based on you know if you're reaching out to artists or you're reaching out to consultants. Um, but I'm really curious, Ursi, like what your the nature of your role is. If you could like just describe what you do for the city, that would be great. So yes, uh, my, so my title is cultural arts specialist, as you know, and, and essentially uh, I am liaison from the Parks and Rec staff uh, to the Cultural Arts Commission. So uh, some of my duties involve uh, attending all the Cultural Arts Commission meetings, uh, preparing uh, draft agendas, um, reviewing the minutes along with Aaron and other supervisors um, in the course of the past 20 years that I've uh, been here. Um, I um, uh, also put together the art gallery shows uh, in terms at the direction of the commission. So uh, uh, 
if a commissioner if a commissioner elect to say put on a youth art show which we will be doing again this year um i i will um you know they they actually fairly recently they've started incorporating themes in their art shows but before they used to be group uh shows and so um i would uh, maintain the database contact artists uh put out press create flyers put on the program, <laughs> get food <laughs> for reception, and do all the follow-up that's involved. Um, commissioners are responsible for hanging the art and finding a judge uh, if it's going to be a juried event. Um, uh, in terms of uh, art calls for larger art project, I usually handle promoting the call, reaching out to, um, well, depending on the extent of the call to local or up to national organizations. We've never gone international um, for um, for uh, call for entries, requests for proposals. Um, what else do I do? <laughs> I, I think that's kind of the major things I can think of off the top of my head. Um, and there's just a lot of um, city related uh, administration things that come up that I also uh, manage, so. Thank you, Ursi. Uh, is that it, Madison? Yeah. Okay, go, uh, Camille, you're next. Yes, when you, um, it's for Ursi. Thank you for you guys being so patient with us and all of our questions. When you spoke about the various uh, shows, art shows, were they mostly youth or did you have uh, incoming outside artists doing gallery shows or a show that might be touring? I mean, what was the content and the, the focus of these uh, art shows? Um, so yes, yeah, so the commission um, sponsors four uh, art gallery, pro up to four art gallery programs in a year. Uh, one of the programs is a youth art uh, dedicated program and it, for the last 20 plus years has been a partnership with our school district uh, and we, except for the COVID years, um, uh, where we had where we couldn't do anything really other than virtual when when we finally had to adapt. Um, uh, our first one coming up this year will be uh, on March 10th and 11th. Um, and then there are three adult-oriented shows that the commissioners actually decide what the media is going to be. Um, so uh, media has ranged uh, from soul two-dimensional art shows to painting art shows to combination of photography and painting. And it, they, they switch it. They're free to switch up any year um, how they what they would want to exhibit in earlier years. We did, had floral arts represented, um, quilting fiber arts represented. Um, so uh, Day of the Dead has been a highly successful one that I think for the first year we did in 2018. So, um, so yeah, they are two day events. We do not have a dedicated gallery. What we do is we reserve uh, our municipal services building a few rooms here. Uh, for which they're multi-purpose rooms, so for a two-day public exhibit. Uh, but as a result of COVID, we also um, started adding virtual uh, virtual uh, programs to follow up of selected artworks from the show. Uh, we also have a small display window here in the uh, Municipal Services Building where we could put in a small number of uh, selected art pieces uh, in the window for displays that run roughly, roughly a month, plus or minus. Um, artists, uh, we usually put Bay Area calls out, uh, but because the shows are only two days in duration, we usually get more local artists, uh, Peninsula uh, artists uh, participating as opposed to East Bay or Marin. So, I, Darcy, I must say, it's a good plug. We do have an upcoming art show this it's weekend. True. It's true. So if you guys are interested, both Friday and Saturday at the Municipal Service Building, we're happy to send along information for you guys. Great, thank you. Camille, did you have another question? Uh, no, that was it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other committee members have questions? Tom? Long-term, you said long, it's a long-term plan. What, what does that look like? How many years? And you said the, the plan is for a long-term look at the, the agenda. Well, I think um, with, most, with most master plans, right, it takes a, a little bit of time to implement. So you look at about 10 years there. And then I think um, just, you know, about 10 years after that would be 
kind of successful in our eyes, um, knowing that often you have to go back out for new master plans as times change. Um, but I think it's realistic to think about a 10 year implementation with 10 years of it um, consisting post. And, and Karen answered my uh, my one question. And if you were, what is your most successful small project, uh, most fun, most successful small project you've worked on to help us get our feet wet? For um, bringing art to Brisbane? Yes. No, to South San Francisco. What have, they, oh, what have, oh, what have we done? Or see, do, you've had your hand in most of these. I'm newer on the on the cultural arts side of it. Um, so are you, are you, oh, so you're asking for small projects uh, here in the city, here in South City? For us to get our feet wet here I'm in sorry. Brisbane. What have they done? What have you done? So I, Percy, as you think about it, I can give an example maybe. Um, <clears throat> Uh, last year, we worked with Skyline College, um, and we were able to have them do a mur mural project, and they have an actual mural art course that they have, and so they were great to work with as they were learning about murals. They were able to do, we did actually a whole um, four sides to one of our park um, structures that host, holds the restrooms as well as um, supplies, and then like a... Um, um, a snack bar type window side of the building. So they actually were able to do that at our Altaloma Park just last year. Um, they made a great video that goes along with it, showing their whole process from beginning to end. Um, but that that was relatively low in cost on our end, you know, a little bit of prep from staff, um, some priming of the building to get it ready, as well as the graffiti coating. Um, but for the most part, um, the actual product was free. Um, so that that's a good one to kind of get started with a little bit there. Um, Ursi, I don't know if you have other fun small projects that, that you can recommend. Um, I'm sorry, uh, before you move on real quick, um, did you have to, did you do a lot of public outreach for that? You just sort of, what, you know, had them propose what they wanted to do and the commission just sort of decided, you know, because it was free. Um, how was the process in deciding what they were going to draw or paint? Yes, so that one was a little bit unique as in um, they had, a direction they were going in and then it kind of fell through. So they pivoted. We were able to work with them, um, but they did present to our commission, our cultural arts commission. They, we had given them a little bit of ideas to leading into it. Um, and then they presented the, to commission. Commission gave their feedback and they were able to give us, um, you know, their renderings back. Um, so it, it was a little bit shorter of a timeline than we normally would have had, just given that it was a class and they had to get it done within a certain time. Um, but for the most part, it was still, we were still able to have um, conversation dialogue about, about that. Yeah, yeah. and I, I guess I would, I would say if we're talking, we're speaking about a public, um, public art project, uh, along those lines, I would say, in my experience, the uh, utility box projects have always been kind of fun. They that that started, uh, I believe, in two thousand and four, and um, and it was repeated roughly every two years, uh, and it was just fun. It got a lot of uh, uh, of our local artists here uh, uh, creating some beautiful, beautiful um, mural art. On, on the um, on our utility boxes, um, that many several of them are uh, probably need to be revisited and perhaps uh, um, changed out. But uh, a couple of them have stayed uh, and are still looking good. And um, it's been fun meeting the artists. Uh, um, it started kind of low budget actually. Uh, the artists did not get. Uh, uh, uh the the paint was donated the supplies was donated yeah. to them all, all they just came up with the concepts and painted the pieces on the utility boxes um uh but over time the budget grew to give them a little bit more of an honorarium uh every time it was repeated so yeah, that was uh, the public art projects that was kind of the fun one that i was involved in Mercy, were you able to work with PG&E to paint on their utility boxes, or are they exclusively painted on city utility boxes? Uh, we we uh, we use uh, city utility boxes yeah. exclusively. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There we the it's not impossible, but it's a little it's a bigger <laughs> obstacle to climb to get uh, public uh, or private agency involved. 
Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lisa? Yeah, it's just a quick question. Um, because you mentioned uh, youth art scholarships and working with some of the art teachers in the school district. And I was just wondering, does your art commission um, support art education? Is that part of what you guys fund? So our art, we do offer um, a variety of art courses um, as part of the parks and recreation. Um, mm -hmm. we, we actually in conversations through the public art master plan have been, you know, one of the conversations is that um, the city and the, through the general plan is looking at a um, arts district. Um, so there's a whole Lindenville study happening right now that's being identified as a possible arts dis district. And that's a lot of the conversations that are coming out of those meetings and from our some of our focus groups is how, you know, we can get maybe the, the courses that we can't offer in a multi-use like room that we have here in um, the parks and recreation, but maybe more of like the little industrial, like hands dirty can make a big mess. And maybe that that those can be over in the Lindenville. So um, we definitely have our commission that supports those. It's just trying to find the correct way to offer them and where those can be housed. Yeah, so maybe those can be folded into like the park and rec department and uh, and maybe some of those funds can, can uh, help create an art district or art studio space that can be used by the community. Okay. Love it. Your brain. Okay, Love great. Uh, Beth? I, I'm wondering um, if your arts commission supports temporary art uh, and um, also if an, an, another question is um, who supports the performing arts? in your town? Is there like a hotel tax or how does that work? Percy, do you want to start with the temporary okay. art? Yeah, um, yes, the, our, our, our commission is open to all forms of art, temporary included. Um, the situation uh, is, is uh, you know, identifying the project and then um, internally for staff finding the bandwidth to be able to accommodate. That's always the tricky part. Um, sometimes it's a lot of balls to juggle, um, trying to satisfy the needs of the commission. Um, my in, in my capacity, I am only here part time. Erin, as business manager, has other things that she needs to do. So it becomes tricky in that regard. Uh, but absolutely, the support is there. The desire is there. Um, and it's just trying to prioritize what can be done. Um, so far, um, uh, in so far as uh, arts education, uh, the the commission is yes, and for youth, very supportive of that. There go the the continuing uh, youth art uh, show, and then they incorporate uh, at where they can with their other art gallery shows education uh, as well. Uh, for example, the Day of the Dead, or uh, when we had a movie night, we we had a mask making and. Uh, um, and other activities that are art related. Uh, performing arts, uh, the Park and Recreation Department does pr pr uh, sponsor uh, the San South San Francisco Civic Ballet, Mexican Folkloric and other groups of that I, I know Erin can speak to more. Um, and we have always, uh, when we've had programs uh, invited performing arts to be part of our visual arts program, um, we, it depends on the composition of the commission. Uh, for most of the time that I've been involved, our commissioners have been more uh, uh, directed towards the visual art uh, programming and public art uh, pieces. Uh, so performance arts has not been quite as delved into as much, uh, but uh, we now have new commissioners that are really gung-ho to uh, involve performing arts a little bit more. Um, uh, and so we look to the possibility of incorporating, it, incorporating that a little bit more broadly uh, as uh, we move into the future. And I'll also just add with the performing arts aspect, um, you know, we don't have a theater here. We, when we have like, we do a large nutcracker in December with our South San Francisco Civic Ballet program. And we do that um, through the high school um, theater. So it is like we rent that, you know, um, for, through them, um, well, through the JPA, and then it's just the services for um, their custodials for those times. But 
Um, you know, we don't we don't have um, a theater, and that's another thing that we've been one of the themes that came through with the public art master plan is you know whether it's a large performing theater or whether it's just little you know identified like um, public space areas for outdoor like guitar playing or something like that. Um, we have um, identified that as a need that we don't currently fill. And then I think you also had a question of like maybe like temporary sculptures. Was that part of your question? Up, oh, you're muted. You're muted. Sorry. Um, you all, you also mentioned that your shows, and I I've been to the one that's two days long, um, and so you don't have a space to be able to have temporary shows or, and I think you had a temporary sculpture program in Orange Park at some point, right? Yeah. So how are were those people paid or to, were the, the pieces rented? And how did you deal with things like insurance and all of that? Because if, if things are out in the public, there's a, a fair amount of risk. Yeah, you're you're speaking to our sculpture loan program. Yeah, we haven't we haven't done that for quite a while, but yes, there were several years where we had a temporary uh, loan program. Um, I, it's been a while since I've seen that document, so I, I, I yeah, I'm happy to uh, go back and uh, find it and perhaps uh, give you some uh, information. Uh, but as memory serves, I believe the artists had to provide their own insurance. And uh, they were two-year loan programs where um, at the end of the two years, uh, the artists could choose to take back their art, uh, their sculpture, or uh, if the commission approved it, it could be extended uh, for a year or two, or um, if the commission really liked it uh, and made the recommendation, it could be purchased and uh, be uh, added to the city's inventory. Uh, yes, there were a, there was an honorarium uh, given to the artist for the loan period. I want to say maybe it was about fifteen hundred dollar, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so, and it, and all the pieces that went in were um, in our sculpture garden. Uh, so, we actually some of our permanent collection pieces came from that program. So. <laughs> hmm. Okay, yeah, I because I remember looking, I'm an artist also. I remember looking at that program and the insurance mm -hmm. was so much more than the fifteen hundred dollars or whatever the honorarium was that I, I couldn't consider it. So um, but um the other question, have you ever had uh like an artist in residence like in different that might be installed and work with different departments in the city or working in community and you know, educational outreach on like, say, for example, you had an environmental initiative or, you know, uh, some sort of uh, other kind of public social issues that you wanted, to, you needed, you could use the, the, the work of an artist who knew how to build community and get people involved. Did you ever, have you ever had that kind of thing involved in your budgets for the public arts? Um, to my recollection, no, uh, but I would not say that it would not be something that would be a possibility in the future. And then finally, if since you're in the middle in the process of working on your 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 public art master plan, is this the kind of thing that you would think would be, you know, if you were to entertain the, the list of things that I just brought up, is that something that you might put in your master plan? Mm, I don't know. That prob that would be up to the consultants, I think. I don't know. So I, I think some of what we'll see will be um kind of hierarching um, like recommendations where that could fall under it. So maybe, you know, um, I'm trying to think of one of the themes, but like to support artists in the community and maybe that would be a great way to do it. So it might not specifically identify that you need to put an artist on staff, but it would give you um, recommendation of like that, that's the direction that maybe the, the, this could go in. So I think in a roundabout way it would, but they definitely would be like addressing how ways we can get artists, you know, support artists in the community, and that could easily fall under that, I would say. Okay, thank you. Am I muted? No. Okay, I have some questions also. Uh, what is the annual budget of the cultural arts program? So the culture arts programs, we actually go um, each budget year, we go and ask um, 
So in the past, it's been about $50,000 that we put in and it's a new ask every year. Um, this past year we were, um, we had $10,000. Um, and then there's been other, like whether it's, um, I think we had like a, con a contribution from a um, developer from the past. Um, so there's different, different um, things that come in play. I think our current um, unrestricted funding is about $72,000 for this fiscal year. Um, and then as we had mentioned, we did put in, uh, we do have our um, art ordinance. So um, we're expecting money from that, but even with more and more of the developers we've met, a lot are very interested in um, keeping art on their site or for the community to see, but um, on their construction in their built areas. Um, so we aren't seeing as much money hit that as we maybe thought we were going to initially. Um, but part of the public art master plan is also looking into ways that, that that could be also be funded too. Okay, so right now for this year it's seventy two thousand, and that's for like the different the four shows and like Nutcracker and some different um, performances and things like that. Um, yeah. Not entirely, no. So that's that's more for mm -hmm. our commission um, if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they're looking at with our new library and parks and recreation facility, getting sculpture or some kind of art over there. That's maybe that's the direction they want to go in. Um, or if there's a mural, there's something they're looking at. Maybe that will be, some, uh, you know, something that they want to um, explore our um, our art shows. Um, we have we do support that out of the park and recreation budget. Um, and then we do the Nutcracker itself is actually um, our classes programs. And so um, those ones kind of have their own little pockets that 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 um, they do have like, um, sorry, they do, <clears throat> there's an, um, a participation fee for the participants um, for that show. And then they do sell ticket. That one's not a free. So I think it's like, Five dollar ticket or around there, um, and so those fees are are to cover the cost of the actual um, production of that of those performances. So, um, I should also mention that that we currently have like a graffiti a graffiti abatement um, project that has has a separate funding for that too that we're working on um, putting an uh, RFQ out for. So. There, there's different ones. I would say this current fiscal year, it's 72,000 unrestricted for our cultural arts commission um, that they can kind of decide where, where, where the need is or break it up accordingly um, for, for what this year, what their focus is on. The rollover, I uh, Does it roll over to the next year? If you don't use it, if you don't use it? no. Okay. Uh, no, we, we go back and ask each year for um, okay. whatever we, we have out, have determined for that fiscal year. Okay. Um, are there any other questions for, from committee members? Beth? Yeah. Um, another question, um, being that you're an arts commission, um, have you always been one or were you a committee first that trans transitioned into a commission and have, is there a reason why you're a commission and not a committee? I, Ursi, you might know. So we are a cultural arts commission, and I don't, Ursi, do you have the answer to that one? Um, I believe from, since from their inception, they were a commission. I, I do not, I do not, my, the historical uh, information I have doesn't indicate that they were ever a committee. Um, it was initiated uh, by uh, late Mayor uh, Jack Drago here in the city. Uh, he and a couple, it's Carol Matsumoto and a couple of other council members or, or future um, future mayors um, actually formed the foundation of the commission. And several of the members uh, were on board for quite a long time. Um, none of them are there now. <laughs> I think all of our members have come in in the last you know, 10 years or so, roughly. So, uh, so, but yeah, it's always been a commission. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Um, okay, in closing, I would like, I was wondering, is it possible to, um, your, your slideshow was very helpful. Is it a possible to get a copy or email that to? Okay, I have it. Oh, okay, great. I can, I can send it out to everybody. 
Okay, great. And yes. then um, can we invite you back in the future after your project's over, just maybe for a recap to get some, you might have some more insight if you're open to that. That would be great sometime, you know, after, I'm not sure when it's, what, is it May or? May is when we expect to have it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So and, I, maybe, and I'll just add, as Ursi had mentioned um, earlier, you know, a lot of us all borrow from each other. So we're happy to share information with you guys too, as, as you go through the process and what have you. So absolutely. We should definitely cross promote too. Yeah. You were such, you were right over the hill. So I'm so close. <laughs> definitely. Thank all you. right. Thank you. Uh, at this time, do I open it up to, I'd like to open up to public comments or are there any uh, public members that are attending that would like to make, have a question or a comment? Let me check my email. Checking email or text. I have none. Okay, no further public comments. Okay, well, thank you both for attending, Aaron and Ursi. Thank you. We appreciate your valuable time and best of wishes on your uh, new document and your process. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you for inviting us. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. So next item is uh, our next meeting is on the schedule for Monday, February 27th. Is that correct? At 4.30? That is correct. So, all right. Well, at this time. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we'll try to get on that uh, every third Monday after that we just had a couple holidays but we'll okay. move into the every third Monday at 4 30 as a hybrid um starting in March okay okay great well at this time I'll move to adjourn the meeting at 5 35 thank you okay thank you bye bye thank you